So the first thing we're going to look at today is the net checkbook balance on the upper left hand side there. That is your ending balance of the prior year's financial statement. So those need to match. And if yours do not match, you I will reach out to you and tell you that we have a little bit different discrepancy or we have a discrepancy of what the totals are. Um, we are required to use the same balance because what we record at the end of the year for your financials is what goes on our tax return. So that's why we have to have um, the exact same. If there's any adjustments that need to be made, we can make it um, in the current year. So you'll have your net checkbook balance and then whatever savings accounts you have. And that's for us here will be a total beginning cash and investments of $15,487.72. Um, and then we'll go right, we'll jump right into the income statement. Um, if you look at your October statement that that we sent, you'll see here where there is a there was a debit. The first line was a debit of $35.50 for your dues. You'll see in here that we put that in as, um, as a negative because it's already going to be pulling everything over. Um, so in the end, we'll just be recording the net amount. You'll see here where it's um, either a, a debit or a credit. And in the end, this $309 for every dues entry that will come across on your guys' statements. If you look on the front page, that information pulls right over to your membership dues report. Okay. So here you can see then that net amount would be that $108 um, that we will be recording. In October, we also had on the October statement, um, annual meeting postcards. If that meeting, if those postcards are for a specific meeting, let's say it's a youth one. Um, in this case, it's just a regular annual meeting. So it would go in this um, conventions Conferencing. and conferences. Oops, sorry, wrong. There you go. Right there. Um, so that's where it would go. If it was a youth event, you put it in your youth activities. That way, when you are reporting to your um, board, you can explain or you can show them exactly what your youth activities were for the year, your conventions and meetings and such, and it would be all the expenses for the year, no matter what the event is. Because um, you might obviously have more than one event in that year. Then in, Octo in October as well, we had the youth, we have a youth bus trip. Um, you'll see that over here in your expenses, the $300. The reason why um, you really could technically either put that in plane and bus trips, or you could put it in a youth activity, just depends upon where you want to see it when you're reporting it to your board. Um, in this case, I put it in the plane and bus just so you can see that it stands out that you guys did take a, a bus trip and that it's not getting just jumbled into all the other youth activities you do for a year. So that's the only reason why I did that. Um, in the end, the, the way it gets reported um, on the state side, it does not matter. So you can do it in either or. So if you look at your November statement, it has a balance brought forward. Um, that's just the ending balance of the month prior. Education funds. So if you flip back over to our income tab, you can see where we put the education funds in there. Um, please make sure you fill in your education funds, whether it's coming on your statement from the state or if it's coming to you directly from your co-op. Some co-ops pay you guys directly and they don't send them through to the state. That's fine. We just need to know what those are. Then you can see the dues entry we had here of a debit of $14 and then a credit of $59.50. Then we'll look at the December one. In December, we only had a dues entry of $3.50. That 
That brings us to at the end of December was a credit balance of $1,106.90. So at the end of that quarter, you would receive this test company would receive a check for that amount of money. If that money is due to this, if this is a positive number, then that's money that it's owed to the state office. Um, you do not have to pay that on a quarterly basis. I recommend that you do only because then it keeps your books nice and clean and you don't have a an issue with funds being carried over and it can be a little bit harder to track. So if the county has the funds available, it is best just to do it at the end of the quarter. Um, again, I we understand if the county doesn't have that much cash on hand, then we just roll those balances. And please um, pipe in anytime if I'm rambling because I sometimes tend to do that. You're doing great. So then let's take a peek at January's. January's, we had the two dues entries. Um, right here are the two dues entries. And then you'll see we have three um, insurance line items, liability insurance, secretary bond insurance, and bus and accident. Um, each county pays a portion of that. It's based on your membership totals. I don't know if I accidentally changed. So I oh, let someone in. No, okay, that's fine. Um, so these are things that protect you. So if you are having an event, um, somebody slips and falls, you're covered for that. If you are um, providing transportation for a youth event, it would protect you there. It also protects um, the county for treasurers, um, anybody that has access to the cash. It would protect against that as well. Um, and then obviously the bus and accident insurance is just strictly that for, for the use of the bus. That's your portion of the insurance for that. So if we look at February, um, February, we have the dues entry of $28. Um, I did forget to bop back over here to the expenses when I was talking about the insurance. This is where the insurance goes. So I apologize for that. So if we go back here, back to the cash, um, we have the $28 debit for dues. And then we also have an expense for some youth postcard mailings. You can see here, I put that under youth activities. Um, it, in these instances where it's a mailing or something that the county is doing, those are not considered advertising. Really, the only thing that would fall in that advertising column is if you did some advertising in your local newspaper, on um, the internet or on um, your radio station, things like that. Um, that's really the only thing that would go in your advertising. Everything else should either be related to a youth activity, a specific youth activity, or let's say a, a meeting or a shop talk or something like that would fall in under, underneath that conventions, conferences, and meetings. Then we'll flip back over to the income tab. Um, I have the $15.50 for dues. And then we have a grant award for this county that will fall underneath other um, income. It is not local assistance. The only thing that local assistance is, is the dollar per member that is paid out to the county at the end of the year. It would be on 930 is when that gets paid out. Um, and you will have it within that first to second week of October is when you'll get that. But that's where we put that. So then if we flip back to the front, to the main report page, you can see the education funds. Um, the interest due I put in here is just 40, is $45. So this is what you would get on your monthly um, bank statement. That's usually the interest that you're gonna be earning there. Um, local assistance. So this amount here gets a little tricky and can trip you guys up just a little bit. So because you will never get 
that um, the local assistance and the last quarter check will come within the first couple of weeks of October. Um, even though you're getting them, those funds in the next calendar year, they're actually income for 930 for your prior year. So the amount that you would have here in this local assistance, you're going to put the $1,200 in here, even though you're not getting that check until October. Um, it seems a little counterintuitive because you guys are based on a cash basis and not an accrual method. But because we can't close out and get those numbers until membership is closed and balanced for the year, that's why you, you wouldn't get those funds ahead of time. But we use these figures here to report on our um, taxes, on the tax return that I do for, for all the counties. Um, so that's why we need to make sure it's the accurate, it's the amount that was paid out to you guys in that calendar year. So that's that's why we do that. Um, and for people that are new, explain the line October first to September thirty. Oh, okay. Yes, I'm sorry. I do know that we have some new treasurers, so I apologize. Um, our calendar year or the fiscal year for the farm organization is October first through September thirtieth. We don't. We follow a fiscal year. We do not follow a calendar year. So when you hear me referencing that, that's that's why. Um, that's that's the fiscal cutoff is 930. Okay, so if you look at the last statement we have then is March. And March, we just have some regular dues entries here. Um, and then we have an ag cost share credit of $95. So here you can see on 310, um, the test group wrote a check out of their checking account to the Jamestown Sun for $190. They sent that ad and a request for ad share, cost, ad cost share credit to Pam Musland. And the state reimbursed this, this organization half of what their advertising cost was. So for the $95. So that's really not income necessarily for you guys. Um, so we record it very similar to how you do the dues. So in the end, what we're recording is you only had advertising expense then of $95. So what that credit does, it's not really cash for you. It's just reducing the cost of your advertising expense. So that's why we put it as a negative 95 instead of on the income tab. We just put it on the expense side. Um, so that's that's what we do there. So then in the end, you can see on our expenses in column D, um, both these numbers at $742 matches on both sides. So all that's doing is making sure column D totals, all of the columns across total and everything is balancing. So we don't have to worry about if there's, if we're not balancing, it's not because of a column error or something like that. So it's gonna be similar on the income tab. It'll be the same thing. So $5,954 even. So when we follow that through, you can see the total cash receipts there. That matches what your income is of the $59.54. And then your ending cash um, or your, excuse me, your total expenses of the $742.46 matches your expense tab. So all of these are pre-done. So everything just pulls forward. If you need a copy of the um, Excel sheet here, please just reach out to me in my email um, or get a hold of Jessica and we will get you that. Um, we do send the paper mailings out usually in August and it will be the current years that you need to fill out and it'll also give you a sheet for the next year for you to help or to help you track your records. Um, 
I totally lost my train of thought, but um, but that will usually come out in August. So you'll get those. So everybody will get a paper copy. Um, even if you do the Excel sheet, it's just a, an easy way for us to do it. Um, you can send this form back, the main sheet back, because we do have to have a signed and audited copy. So in here, if you look here where I've got it highlighted there, that is where your treasurer will sign. Your audit committee is the information here on the bottom. So the audit committee, um, that can be anybody in your organization. It cannot be, the treasurer cannot be part of the audit committee. Um, treasurer can help answer questions, things like that, um, but they're not, they should not be part of the audit committee or anybody that has direct access to the checking account. So let's say it's, you've got two authorized signer, one is the president, one's the treasurer. Those two individuals should not be part of your audit committee. It should be anybody else on your board. It can be people, um, just regular, regular people that attend your meetings, um, county members, that kind of thing. But the thing you'll want to provide to them is your full a full year of your bank statements, the bills that were paid for your year, for your fiscal year, so October through September, any deposits that were made, um, and then the prior year completed financial statements is what is what you should provide them. And then really what they're going to do is they're just going to glance through, look, make sure everything seems reasonable um, and everything has an expense associated with it. And it should be a legitimate expense with an invoice that it's attached. Um, if you need help or need a little guidance more on the audit committee, please reach out to me. I can definitely help you with that. Um, we are the... We are required by our insurance policy that every county needs to audit their books. That is part of that. Um, that's part of your insurance. So if you um, if those aren't being done, then if there were any issues with your county, um, maybe with God forbid embezzlement or something like that, it could affect your um, coverage. Um, I'm not an underwriter, so I can't tell you that for sure, but I do know that we are required to have that done. So that I do know. Um, I'm just kind of peeking through here to see if there is, I'll just take a breath. Does anybody have any questions so far? Sometimes someone at your local bank or credit union will do the audit for you. Quick suggestion, Diana. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Diana. Yes. Sometimes somebody in your bank, your local bank or credit union can do the audit for you. Thank you. That's very good advice. Um, some dates to remember. November 30th is when all of the financial reports are due to me by. Um, that's a hard and fast date. We need to have them by that date. We are going to start allowing the counties to do a direct deposit for your quarterly checks um, that you would normally get at the end of the quarter. It would come, you would get your quarter statement, uh, statements along with a check. Um, if you are interested in the direct deposit option, please reach out to me. I will send you a form for your county to fill out. Unfortunately, we don't have the ability to email, um, easily email statements at this time, but we are working in office here to try to figure out a good way to do that. Um, some people would prefer to have them emailed. Um, you do not have to have direct deposit if you don't want. It's just an, a convenience option for you guys. And that's that's really all. Um, Brandy, under what category would I record the agraria dividend? Agraria dividend. Very good. So income. Your original investment should be here. Um, 
you should have a thousand, like if you have a thousand dollars, let's say, let's say they've got a thousand dollars. Um, that's where that would go. So your original investment would go there. Any interest earned or dividend paid, you're going to put it in here. So we'll say $10. And then down here, you would also have the your original investment amount. Um, not every county currently does that. I do know who has them and who doesn't. So just because I have a, a different report that I have to look at. Um, but that is a very good question. Yes. So that is where you put your original investment. And then the dividend you receive would just be, um, actually would not be here. Not there. It would not be here. I'm sorry. It would be, it'd be other income. Other income. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to put $12 there. And you can put agraria dividend. So very good. And I will put my, good job, Jessica, my email address in here, along with my direct line and my cell phone number. Use sparingly. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm totally, you can tell I'm using somebody else's computer. Yeah. I'm not even using the right. Sorry, that will drive me crazy if I don't do it right. It's all right. Oh, it's so Oops. Good, that's Stephen. Sorry, just his computers throwing everyone off. We'll say it's her computer. It's yep. not operator error. It's not Monday. And that's my personal cell phone. Please feel free to reach out to me. Um, you can text me. You can call me. If I don't answer, please just leave a voicemail. Um, I don't always, I don't always answer it if it's a number I don't know. But generally, those of you that I work with frequently, I have you all in my address book. So that helps. Um, but I'm going to get rid of this because now I don't balance. So here you can see um, that both of these, the cash and the expenses are all balanced out. So you these put it in there so you don't, so you would see where it pops up. Oh, so, so if it didn't balance, this means that I have more cash than I have either expenses or cash recorded here. And that's why those wouldn't balance. So this amount here should be the balance as of your 930 bank statement from your local bank or credit union. Less any deposits or, um, or taking out any checks or deposits that, that haven't cleared your bank yet. The plus deposit and transit, this spot here, generally the deposit and transit or the less payable to NDFU is really just specific to the state organization, not your, um, if you wrote a check to the, to Jamestown Sun and they didn't cash it, that wouldn't be included in here. You sure could if you wanted. Um, Normally, you would just make that reflective in your checkbook balance. Okay. This here, um, so at the end of the the end of the March, as of March, I owed or the state owed the Test County three thousand dollars, three thousand forty nine dollars and sixty four cents. So if this was as of nine thirty, um, since you're recording all these transactions on the on the statements on your income or expense tabs. That's why you have to record the these dollar amounts um, as like a deposit and transit or money that's owed to the state. Otherwise you wouldn't balance. So in here is the $1,200 for the local assistance and then that last quarter check. If let's say I owed money, the test company owed money, then the only thing that would be in here would be your dollar per member and the amount owed to the county would, or to the state office would be here. Ooh, not 10,000, that made you guys negative. So we'll get rid of that. Um, 
So then this is your ending balances for the year. And then the next year, this these will be your beginning balances for the for the next calendar year or fiscal year, excuse me. Okay, Diana had a comment on the agraria dividend. Please, ex okay, her question is, please explain that the agraria dividend needs to be recorded on the income sheet first. Okay, where, where I recorded it is what you're asking or because I overstepped. So your dividend, your dividend income would go here. So $10. Um, but then you see here that this is off, but that's because I don't have it reflective in my in my um, checkbook balance. So let's say we're just going to pretend here. Let's just add that. She is meaning on the income tab. Oh, got it. Sorry about that. So in here, you would put, I'm sorry, I was side sidestepping that step. Agraria dividend would go here. So you would put your $10 there, whatever your dividend is. And then it would be other income. So then you see, if I get rid of this, you see this, it says grant award. This is a totaling um, cell here. So all it's doing is it's just pulling over your information on the income, the other income tab. So if you wanted it separated, if you wanted to separate it out, you sure could, or just put grant award and agraria dividend. And then we recorded it in the bank here. So you have it on the income side, and then you also have it on your, um, on the checkbook balance side. So that that is how then you end up balancing here. Does that make sense? So I apologize for that. I was just sidestepping that and I didn't mean to. Very good questions. Ooh, what? now I got a joke. Oh yeah. <laughs> so last year I did a fact. So this year it's a joke. Um, I love quote unquote dad jokes. So this is my joke. Why do cows have hooves and not feet? Because they lactose. <laughs> Sorry. Oh my gosh, I laughed so hard. My husband was like, when I was telling him all the different jokes I was gonna tell you, um, or this one's just a freebie because it's fun. Yeah. What do you call a cow? with no legs, ground beef. <laughs> okay, awesome. that's enough of my jokes then. Okay, so I'm gonna stop sharing this screen. And if you guys have any questions, uh, please feel free to send them in. I'm just going to try to squeeze in here. There we go. <sighs> go over the secretary's role a little bit. And then if you guys have any questions uh, that you think of for Brandy or that you think of for me, let me know. So the main thing to remember with uh, being a secretary is that we will take your reports however you want to send them. You can go into your portal and send them through the portal under the um, activity reports. And if you don't see activity reports in your portal, please let me know because all secretaries should have access to the activity reports tab. We'll take them that way. Um, we will also take them via email. If you just want to shoot me an email, we will take all that information there. If you still want to write them out on paper and mail them to me, that's great. We can take them that way. If you want to fill out a sheet, because now I send them with all the MRSs to uh, the meetings, and you just want to fill out the sheet and sign it and send it along with the MRS and I will get it. That works as well. So the North Dakota Farmers Union bylaws require that we, that county entities have four board meetings 
two membership events and one annual meeting. And that's in the bylaws. And the people who police the, if you will, the locals are all of you counties, okay? So we're not necessarily keeping track of locals um, to a T as we are counties. And the reason all of this is important is not to win these big fancy awards, although that is wonderful. And uh, we're very proud that we do win these awards. Um, it is because when you go to National Farmers Union and you are seated as a delegate, <clears throat> if someone were to challenge your validity as a delegate, Jessica would have to produce all of the reports that you had sent. And we would have to say, I always say Campbell County because that's where, where I'm from in Harriet and it's just an example. Delegate from Campbell County is a valid delegate because this entity meets that state's bylaws. And if that does not happen, that delegate could be unseated as a delegate. So we're doing it to protect the votes of the members at the delegate um, con at national convention. That's why we make sure that we have all of these things. Has it ever happened? No. Is it my job to think of doomsday scenarios? Yes. So that is why we like um, to receive all of the reports. Um, oh, I'll let Brandy answer mm -hmm. that one. But yes, keep the questions coming. So that's why we want the reports um, at the end of the year, the secretary reports, um, to ensure that you, the delegates that are elected from your county or your local as part of your county um, are able to be seated. And if someone would challenge the validity of those delegates, they would be fine. So send them to me. The required meetings are two, four board, four board meetings a year and two membership events and one annual meeting. And we're pretty lenient with membership events. Like if your Epic coach is visiting schools and promoting camp, great. If you guys are putting books out into the community and taking pictures and getting it in the paper, awesome, turn them in, let's do these things. Um, Cause that's definitely promoting farmers union as part of your community. So four meetings, two events, one annual meeting. And it's not to win awards. Um, it's to ensure that any delegates that are elected out of your county can be sat and that we wouldn't have a problem if they were challenged. So that is all I have. I will turn it back over to Brandy. It says, do we need to get our Excel file updated or is it still the same as what we have had for the last several years? I can send her a new one. We'll just send a new one to everyone. All of you wonderful people, the people who came in person today do not want an Excel sheet. And that's totally fine, but we'll send all of you an Excel sheet. Other questions, thoughts, comments? Jessica, I have a question. Gina, I can't hear you. Um, I'm unmuted. Can anyone else hear her? I'll send it in I the chat. I can hear her. What is okay. Can you hear me now? Now try it. Hi, Jessica. Can you hear me now? If you can hear me at all, just okay. what's all the way up to 100 and we can't hear anything. I know I see it. Is that better? Can you hear Hold me on. now? Whoa. Hello. Your, oh, I don't know where your sound is. Here, wait. Can you hear you can see. No, I need oh. to go into the sound on Zoom. Oh. Hello. I think the administrator is having a hard time or can't hear any of us. Oh, okay. No. Oh, audio settings, here we go. Can you hear me now, Jessica? Okay, now try it. 
Can you hear me now, Jessica? Yes, thank you. Okay. okay, so my question is, is when we go on the portal to put in our, how much detail do you want there? So the honestly, the, on, the only thing I really care about is, or that is necessary is, first of all, I really care about the assistance required. Um, so, cause I do go through and read the reports and if you guys need something, try to follow up with you. Um, and then any actions that are taken. So like if there's any major motions, so like um, at reorganization, they often decide if they're going to uh, pay for hotel delegates to state convention, or if they're going to, you know, reimburse them for uh, registration fees. So if you make uh, those kinds of motions and then, okay, maybe we might do a shop talk this fall, I would cue that over to uh, Mary and say, hey, Grand Forks County is thinking about a shop talk. You should follow up with them on this. Or, you know, she might know it's at the meeting, but I could ask her about it and um, see if she needs any help from us. Okay. Thank you. You bet. Sorry about that. Thanks for your patience. Okay. And a more. Oh, all right, Laura. Got your question answered too. Gina asked a question for more people. Good job. <laughs> all right. Any any other questions? We're here. We're here to answer them. So every member we've had our our uh, our portal established for a while is that the only portal we need to submit their report yes and if you're not um if we didn't get the report from your what i'm trying to say is if we didn't get a report telling us who the county officers are and you're not seeing activity reports uh that would be why but just let us know or have the president let us know and then we can um make sure that you have the tab activity reports on there so you can submit the reports that way. But like I said, portal is one option. There are many options. If you have fights with the portal, I will, you will never find me defending the portal. <laughs> I'm happy to accommodate whatever is easiest for you guys. Any Can other? You send at least me uh, something by mail of, of uh, how to do the reports, secretary reports, and how to get into the portal. And I think I've done that already. It's been a long time since I got into my own portal. All right. The other thing I will tell you is your portal is directly connected to the email address that we have on file with you. So if we don't have an email address on file for you, um, you're going to have to use your MBR number, which is some secret code that I have, which is just fabulous. Um, so please get us your emails. So that can be connected to your portal. If we don't have that, you have to have a fancy, super special code. If you do have trouble getting into your portal, First of all, you're not alone. This is very common. Um, we discussed this at the meeting today and there was some difficulty there. Also difficulty getting timed out. So if you are gonna use the portal and you wanna type things up in a Word document and cut and paste it, or if you don't have Word, you might have notes on your computer, um, cut and paste it over because you get timed out. And that's another function of the portal to ensure that camp registration goes quickly and it's all tied together. That's why it has to be the way it is. Um, but if you do have trouble getting into your portal, please call me. We can make sure that the email address we have in the system is correct. And if we have to reset your password, we can do that for you. Just another phone call you got to make. Not a big deal, right, guys? You're not busy at all. It's another thing. Or if you, you want to let me know, you can shoot me a text and I can have Mariah, our new membership coordinator, give you a call. Good questions. Also, I figured out who Kathy was, so thank goodness. Or Kathy. I will see. All right. Anything else? 
you may need or may not need. And you just, you know. Jessica, I just thought of something else. Yeah. So, okay, like we have our own meetings. Um, but do you want us to like, if we're part of another co-op to put those in as meeting events? So no? um, the only time that becomes relevant is um, when you qualify for the award. So yeah. if you uh, submit to us the four meetings, the two membership reports and the annual meeting, I will call the county president and say, hey, did anyone from your county go to a co-op event this year or a co-op annual meeting? Because to win that membership award at national, you, two things two things happened. So we actually had 18 counties that met the bylaws, but 14 of them won the award because you also have to go to a co-op annual meeting. So it can be like a credit union, a rural telephone, a rural electric. It can be your co-op annual meeting um, that you get ed funds from. Any of those qualify. And so it has to be a member from your county that attends. And then uh, you have to increase in member numbers. So I will generally call the county president and then um, reach out to other county officers if they don't know. If you want to submit the reports, that's fine. It's not a requirement. And it's okay. not something I would track. Um, and what National Farmers Union needs. So me attending a rural electric isn't going to count as a board meeting for my county to meet the bylaw threshold. Okay. No, uh, Sheila just, or, sorry. <laughs> um, so uh, attending a co-op meeting does not count as an event. Uh, events are things that like maybe you would do a co-op appreciation or you were trying to um, drive members to attend the co-op by reaching out and calling members to attend them. And you maybe have like a night together where you were calling, sitting around at a table calling or um, something like that. Um, but going to a co-op meeting does not count as an event for the county membership. Because, yeah, that's just a whole, whole other thing. You should go to them because they do give you education funds. Mm -hmm. It is important. It's very important. I don't have any jokes. Brandy's got all the good jokes. That's loosely good. <laughs> all right. Anything else? I'll let it marinate and be awkward here for another minute. Well, thank you all so much for attending. This was very good. Thank you guys. Got you done with six minutes to spare. If you guys ever have any questions, Brandy and my contact information is in the chat. I also um, sent you an email today, which all of you got because you're on this Zoom call. So very good. So we don't have to send anything in to you? No, nope. You guys are counted. I have everyone on this call counted. I was doing role as Brandy was explaining her presentation. So next step to your $150 check is turning your financials in before November 30th. It's all on you, gang. You can do it. I believe in you. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.